Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the 10th required practical for AQA level of biology and that is the effect of environmental variables on animal movement. So in these practicals involving animal movement which show taxes or kinases, so animals that show taxes or kinases are generally small, simple, motile organisms, for example wood lice or maggots or worms. And we investigate these using choice chambers or mazes. So certain factors or variables that you can um, investigate are things like light and dark, temperature, and also humidity slash dryness, okay? So you'd look at where these organisms would accumulate more, okay? So wood lice logically would be more in the dark, okay? Because that's where their natural habitat is. They'd avoid high temperatures because it could, you know, damage their skin or too much water could evaporate from their gill surfaces, etc. So if we, whenever we handle um, small motile organisms like these, even though they are simple, we need to make sure that health and safety implications are in place, okay? Because they could carry infections and so on, okay? So they could ask questions in this sort of context. So because we're using living organisms, we need to think about health and safety in order to avoid infections. We've got to wash our hands, um, wash any surfaces down with ethanol after using it, cover up any open wounds that there that you may have. Um, so because these are living organisms, okay, ethical implications are in place, okay, so you need to treat them with care and ensure that no harm is caused to them or they're not stressed by whatever behaviours you're going to assess. So an important thing that we need to do before we do these practicals is to assess the probability distribution, okay? We need to ensure that the movement of organisms is random, and that is the point, okay? We need to ensure that their movement before, before you put them in the choice chamber is random. Because if their movement is being influenced by something, then these factors you're going to change, um, th there'd be no point in assessing them because you won't be able to see any difference if the movement beforehand is not random. So to ensure that, we do the chi-squared test, okay? So this is the test they need to give. We do the chi-squared test and we'll check that there is no significant difference at whatever probability level you're going to assess at. And therefore, it ensures that the difference, okay, is due to chance. So that the organisms, when they move, for example, here in the light, in the choice chamber or in the maze, is random. It's not being determined by some other factors, okay? So, in order to assess that, we use the chi-squared test. So, common questions you can ask with this, for example, are, number one, to suggest why the same species of maggots we use. This is in the context of a practical involving maggots, okay? So, why do we use the same species of maggots? So, it could be maggots or whatever organism there is. That's to ensure that there's no genetic differences, okay? Because same species will mean that they have same slash similar alleles. So we can draw comparisons and therefore no genetic differences might influence movement. Suggest why the same organism is not used more than once in, for example, the choice chamber or the maze. And there's sort of two reasons you can give here. One that one that this prevents any stress, okay? So ethical implications, again, because we're using organisms. And the other more interesting answer is that this prevents the chance of any learned behaviour that the organism might do when it's inside the chamber. A maze can be used to investigate maggot behaviour. Each maggot is placed individually in the maze. The inside of the maze has to be wiped before another trial with another maggot suggests why. Okay, so why do we need to clean... Um, the maze that we're using beforehand um, before we put another maggot in and this is to sort of remove anything that might have been left by the previous maggot so any substance or scent left by the previous maggot so therefore the next maggot's behavior is still random and it's not being influenced by the previous maggot so the next question says to suggest how a lamp could be used to minimize the effect of light intensity on the movement of invertebrates well we can place the light above the choice chamber or maze and that way the light is non-directional okay because it's being distributed equally through all the chambers and therefore light will not have an effect on movement. So they could, so they could, for example, ask you to explain the practical involving this and say how to control the variables. So how would you control temperature? Will you do it at room temperature? How would you control light intensity using a lamp? Well, you'll place the light above the choice chamber to ensure that the source of light is non-directional and therefore there's no effect on that movement. Um, so this is if light is a control variable in whatever investigation. So an application question that they could ask, so this is incorporating gas exchange. So it says wood lice have gills on their surface for gas exchange. Scientists found that the wood lice moved for 94% of the time in the humid side of a choice chamber, but in the drier side they moved only 20% of the time. This is advantageous to wood lice, suggest and explain why. Okay, so why is it basically an advantage that they are moving more in the humid side? Well, by moving more, they will increase the probability of finding a suitable 
environment for where they want to move the case by moving ki by kinesis and moving more um, it'll increase the probability of them finding a suitable environment so why is it exactly that they can move more well it says that they have gills on their surface for exchange okay um, and the concept of the question makes reference to humidity, okay? So therefore, you need to be thinking about water. So because of that, because of the fact that they can move, the reason why they can move more in the humid side is that there is a reduction in the water potential gradient when they are in the humid area, okay? So by moving 94% of the time in the humid area, because the, re there's the water potential gradient is being reduced, that means that they can move more without any sufficient water loss in order to find a suitable environment so that they can conserve water for whatever reasonable suggestion you want to give for hydrolysis reactions in order to keep them hydrated, okay? So what what how do we pick this apart well we need to use what they've given us so it says gills surface for exchange and it makes reference to water humidity so you need to be thinking about what the advantage is for them moving first of all 94 percent of the times well if they move more they can find a more suitable environment why are they able to move more because in the humid side there is a reduction in the water potential gradient so generally what that means is that wood lice um will have water being lost from their gill surface. But if they're in a side where it's more humid, so the external environment has a higher water potential um, than the dry side, that means that the volume of water being lost from the gill surface will be less, okay? So the easiest, most concise, and best way to put that is that there is a reduction in the size of the water potential gradient effectively. So they can retain more water for whatever reason you can give.